Dante DiVincenzo has explosive hops, Splash Brother-esque sniping, and underrated defensive awareness. This possession sees DiVincenzo cut off AD's passing lane, then after Davis hands it off, Dante's rotation off Bradley's so elusive that even LeBron doesn't see it coming. Again working on the back end as a rim protector, here Dante stunts over in one shuffle to the weak side cutting off the paint, and the body language to fake a perimeter recovery gets Fred Van Vliet thinking there's an open lane, but you can see the springiness and timing of DiVincenzo gets him the stuff. Transition chase downs like this one on RJ Barrett are an NBA commonplace, but rarely you see jump shooters getting blocked, so Dante planting his right foot and leaping up off it while simultaneously avoiding the screen from Sabonis for the swat definitely catches Justin Holiday off guard. This play sees Coach Budenholzer run a wide curl action out of a timeout. Middleton fakes the handoff, Giannis is there for the back screen, Cash lobs it up, but the aerial wizardry of Dante completes this action, an attribute of DiVincenzo's that's pretty advanced for a combo guard. This video revisits what Stephen Curry achieved this past June, but then breaks down if Big Ragu can have an Andrew Wiggins type breakthrough. Right quick, just 12.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and stay further updated by following at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter. Back to the content. The Golden State Warriors are coming off a shocking run to their fourth title in eight years, but they'll have to quickly pick up the pieces and get over any potential hangover real fast, as in nine days from this recording, the Dubs will play their first preseason matchup in Tokyo against the Washington Wizards. This should be a road trip where the reigning champions become even closer than they already are, as Golden State will play two games against Washington on the other side of the planet in Japan. The reason I say it was a shocking run to the title is because entering the finals, many people assumed the Warriors had an easy path through the Western Conference and that Boston was going to be the more battle-tested team. I trust Al Horford to get out on a perimeter, move his feet, and make it tough for him. They have rim protection with Williams back there. So I think the, the, the core guys for the Boston Celtics is going to outplay the core guys for the Golden State Warriors. Also, Stephen Curry's injured ankle kept him out from March 16th until the end of the season. But even before the chef went down, the Warriors were far from playing their best basketball, in fact, they were completely slumping. After improving to 41 and 13 back on February 7th, Golden State would win just 12 games over three months while losing 16 of them. No one could have predicted that Stephen Curry could find the rhythm and stamina to be at full form after sitting out for such an extended period of time with such a significant and typical ankle injury. The big three of Stephen, Clay, and Draymond played just 11 of 82 games together during the regular season, so no one expected the Dubs to do much in the playoffs. For Curry, it only took one night in Game 1 of the Western Conference quarterfinals to find his offensive flow. After that rarity, Curry then lit it up for 34 points on 12 of 17 shooting in Game 2, going on to kill Denver by combining to shoot 41 for 79 from the field in Games 2 through 5. Round two against young phenom John Morant and the Grizzlies saw Steph average 26, 6, and 5, and in the next round against Luka and the Mavericks, he averaged 24, 7, and 7. Curry's true shooting was at a 57% clip in round two and a 59% clip in the conference finals. Not too bad for a player who had missed a month straight of games before the postseason. With that said, nothing could have prepared us for what Steph was about to do next. Most non-Warrior fans were predicting the Boston Celtics were just too much after sweeping KD, Kyrie, and the Brooklyn Nets, then outlasting the championship-bred Milwaukee Bucks and Miami Heat in seven games. Would the banged-up Steph have enough left, and would he have enough around him to outlast the powerhouse Seas? were questions that Dubs Nation were scratching their heads about leading up to the finals. With his culture-reversing deep-range mastery, unstoppable Curry slides off the bounce, vocal leadership on and off the court. All of those questions were more than answered in June. 2022 is going to be the year people look back on as the one where Stephen Curry reversed the narrative, a year where Steph proved to the entire world that he was always the bus driver to the Golden State Warriors system. 
because the dubs are nothing without Stephen Curry, not vice versa. The 2022 finals saw Steph fight through another ankle injury, which saw him limp off the court in game three, yet still find a way to average 31.2 points, six boards, five dimes, and two steals per game. Exceptional numbers, but they still don't come close to telling the whole story. Curry now has three championship runs where he hasn't faced elimination, which is insane considering every other active NBA player has combined to do that just three times. Those who claim Curry has all these stars around him and that the Warriors are a super team are forgetting how Steph turns players around him into all-stars. Not to take anything away from the top-notch value over the years provided by Klay Thompson and Draymond Green, members of this generational Warrior Big Three who deserve their respect. All I'm saying is, based off ESPN's recent player ranking, Curry won the 2022 title without a single top 30 player around him. Additionally, those who claim Steph's a one-dimensional player who can only take over with his handle and shooting don't take into account the other facets to his game. The reason Steph doesn't get taken advantage of defensively or bullied down low in the post is because of his top-notch lateral quickness, plus the fact that he deadlifts 400 pounds and bench presses 185. In addition to Curry's defense being criminally undervalued, the same thing goes for his finishing around the hoop and passing out of double teams. Before breaking down a backup in DiVincenzo, Andrew Wiggins deserves some credit for being an elite spot-up three-point shooter all throughout the 2021-22 season and playoffs. Even on pull-up shots, two-way Wiggs shot an efficient 34% from beyond the arc, but it was his 41% mark on spot-up three-pointers which actually made him a more than solid floor spacer. You see why the Canadian became such a staple in the Warriors system when you take into account that shooting is paired with thunderous jump out of the gym springiness when he's either in the open court or as Luca learned the hard way, even when he's just going downhill off the dribble in the half court. Additionally, you see why Maple Jordan and the product of Kansas was the first overall pick back in 2014's draft. When watching his unreal attention to detail and effort defensively, his fundamentally sound finishing and distant shooting, not to mention his incredible handle off the bounce, for a player who's six foot eight with a seven foot wingspan. On to the newest warrior Dante DiVincenzo, who's going to fit right in with Golden State's fast motion offense featuring constant early flare slips and handoffs, which benefit a guard who's capable of moving well with and without the rock. It helps that Dante made 40% on three pointers early in the shot clock for the Kings and Bucks last year. Whether it's hammer screens, dribble handoffs, loops, one pops, split actions, or split cuts, the quickness and execution in terms of his movement is what's going to make DiVincenzo the perfect fit on the Golden State Warriors. In your opinion, is Dante going to have an Andrew Wiggins type breakthrough? Best answer now below in the comments gets next video shout out. And the top 5 commenters by tomorrow, September 21st, earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, where does Jalen Brown rank among shooting guards? Dylan Popoff gets the shout out for saying, Jalen Brown's proved he's a top 5 SG in the league right now. Without his performance in the 2022 playoffs, they don't get to the finals. He was their best player in those games, and the second best player on the floor during the finals. I expect an even better season this year from him, especially after the trade rumors leaked. He's going to show the front office they were stupid to even try offering him up for KD. The story is yours in Community Speaks, so leave your take on today's question.